Good morning, everybody. Um, our morning prayer this morning's readings is Psalm 115. The wisdom uh, reading is from chapter 16, uh, verses 15, to chapter 17, verse 1, and then Romans 14, uh, 13 to 23. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive His Holy Word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His forgiveness of our sins and to seek His grace, that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. Christ died for our sins once for all. Let us worship and praise Him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise Your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord, let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is the Lord our God. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. If only you would hear His voice today. For He comes, He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with His truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 113, 115. My apologies. Psalm 115 Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give the glory for the sake of your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Why should the heathen say, Where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever he wills. As for their idols, they are silver and gold, the work of a man's hand. They have mouths, but speak not. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, yet nothing. They have ears, yet hear nothing. They have noses, but cannot smell. Hands they have, but handle nothing feet but they do not walk, 
They make no sound with their throats. Those who make them shall be like them. So shall everyone that trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. You that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. The Lord has remembered us and he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless all those that fear the Lord, both high and low together. May the Lord increase you greatly, you and your children after you. The blessing of the Lord be upon you, he that made heaven and earth. As for the heavens, they are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord, both now and forevermore. O oh, praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is in the Book of Wisdom, chapter 16 from verses 15 onwards. To escape from your hand is impossible, for the ungodly refuse to know you. Were flogged by the strength of your arm, pursued by unusual rains and hail and relentless storms, and utterly consumed by fire. For the most incredible of all, in water which quenches all things, the fire had still greater effect, for the universe defends the righteous. At one time the flames was restrained, so that it might not consume the creatures sent against the ungodly but that seeing this they might know, might know that, they will, that they were being pursued by the judgment of God. And at another time, even in the midst of water, it burned more intensely than fire to destroy the crop of the righteous. Instead of these things, you gave your people food of angels, and without their toil, you supplied them from heaven with bread ready to eat, providing every pleasure and suited to every taste. For you, for your sustenance, manifested your sweetness towards your children, and the bread ministering to the desire of those who took it was changed to see, suit everyone's liking. Snow and ice withstood fire without melting, so that they might know that the crops of their enemies were being destroyed by the fire that blazed in hail and flashed in the shower of rain. Whereas the fire in order that the righteous might be fed, even forgot its native power. For creation serving you made it, exert itself to punish the unrighteous, and in kindness relaxes on behalf of those who trust in you. Therefore, at that time also, change into all forms, it served all your nourishing bounty according to the desires of those who had need, 
so that your children, whom you loved, O Lord, might learn that it is not the production of crops that feed humankind, but that your word sustain those who trust in you. For what was not destroyed by fire was melted when simply warmed by a fleeting ray of the sun. To make it known that one must rise before the sun to give you thanks and must pray to you at the dawning of the light. For the hope of an ungrateful person will melt like wintry frost and, fr and flow away like waste water. Great are the judgment and hard to describe. Therefore, uninstructed souls have gone astray. Here ends the first lesson, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophets he promised of all that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is Romans, Romans 13, Romans 14, verses 13 to 23, Romans 14. Therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I'm fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy your brother, for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken as evil, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual ed edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean but it is wrong for a man to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better 
not to eat meat or drink wine or to do anything else that will cause your brother to fall. Here ends the second lesson. The Song of the Church We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the power of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty, unbounded, your true and only Son worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right hand of God. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. 
Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assault of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. In the Romans reading today, I think Paul just reminds us the importance of consider those around us. I mean, we know both weak and strong Christians can cause their brothers or sisters to, to stumble. And then also the strong but insensitive Christians may flaunt their conviction and unintentionally offend others. And then the scrupulous but weak Christian may try to fence others in with petty rules and regulation. And I think thus causing people to feel unworthy and oppressed and judge. And I think Paul wants his readers to be both strong in the faith and sensitive to others, to others' needs. I mean, all of us are strong in some areas and weak in others. But we need constantly to monitor the effects our behavior and judgment has on others. I mean, sin is not just a private matter. Everything we do affects others. And we need to check ourselves constantly to consider our words and actions and the effect they have on others. I mean, how often do we not hear uh, the 1 John 4.20 passage? If I say I love God and hate my brother or sister, then I'm a liar. For he who does not love his brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen.
think about this week that has passed. I mean, was there a moment when our reckless judgment could have felt somebody judged or unworthy? Was there a moment where our careless actions could, could have offended or hurt somebody unintentionally? And then, again, what is the one area where we feel that we need to become more sensitive to those around us? Just something also that I pondered on, on this morning. Let not, let's not create bridges between us. Because they create chasms deep and seemingly impossible to, bri to bridge. Don't let our words of hate create fear and highlight our differences rather than our shared humanity. So Lord, I pray that now we lay our words before you together with the fears that evoke them. Forgive our words and put a God on our tongues. Let us continue with our prayers. Blessing and honor and thanksgiving and praise more than we can utter, more than we can understand. Be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from all angels, all people, all creatures, forever and ever. So God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We praise you for the life you have given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hands. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words but by the service of our lives both now and in all eternity.
So, Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us. Answer our prayers as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen.